Gahang po, Pastor. Okay. Going up, so from east, so entering into the temple of God, it's coming from the east side, from the rising of the sun till the going down. This is the entrance of the temple of God. Now, all the offerings, they are entering from the east, okay, going to the west. So, if this is the north, this is the south. So, if you are looking onto it, this is the scenario. Now, burnt offering, we already discussed that in burnt offering, so let me erase this. Now, burnt offering is the first offering that was mentioned in the book of Leviticus. Why? Because of all the offerings that has been done, the burnt offering is the one it started from Adam and Eve, even from the Garden of Eden, up to Adam and Eve, up to Noah, up to uh, Abraham, up to Moses. They are doing the burnt offering. So that is the first thing which we already discussed in our previous study. So going back to that burnt offering, go to that. That is the entrance. So that, that is the entrance of the third offering that is the first burn, uh, first offering now the next offering is what we call the meal offering or they call it as or they call it as grain okay so the grain offering that can be found in, in Leviticus chapter 2. What is mentioned here in the grain offering? It is not a fine floor. Okay? It is a fine floor with oil and with frankincense. Okay? So that is the offering for the meal offering, fine floor, oil, and frankincense. Now, fine floor, it speaks about the flesh. Oil speaks about the Holy Spirit. Frankincense speaks about the aroma, it speaks about the preservation, it speaks about uh, something that is bring good smell of the things which is our flesh, the Holy Spirit is the sweet aroma of our Lord Jesus Christ or our Father in heaven. So the, the main offering is done also second on the second offering. The, the, the Levites or the priest, what is going to do? The priest is going to take a handful of flour and then put the oil and the frankincense, and they will burn it to the altar here. They will burn it into the altar. Then the rest of the offering, it will be used and utilized and be cooked by the priest, by the priests and the Levites in order for them to have food. So it's only a handful that is being thrown to the burnt offering. And then... Uh, they could also offer that is already being cooked through oven. So oven is already popular during those days. Oven is when the earthen vessels, they're preparing an earthen vessels and they are putting all the, the, the fine floor, this bread inside that earthen vessels to be cooked. So they have already open oven, pan, and frying pan. So they, they could even sacrifice that is already been cooked and put it also on the burnt offering and then the rest it will be enjoyed by the priest. Now, all of this is seasoned with salt. So 
all of it, those offering is seasoned with salt. Salt is an everlasting covenant. Okay, you have to remember that also. Maybe one time, next time, we are going to discuss about the salt, which is the everlasting covenant on another topic. We have, we have to focus on the offerings today. So that part of it is the salt is the over, uh, everlasting covenant. Now it must be seasoned with salt. So uh, the Lord Jesus Christ said, you are the salt and light of this world. Because actually, the one who preserves this earth is our Lord Jesus Christ. He holds everything because of him. Because of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father did not completely destroy the earth and make a new one, but rather it was preserved. Why? Because our Lord Jesus Christ is the one preserving it in order not to be destroyed. Actually, it will only be purified and cleansed. And when you would like to preserve something, like for example, that, that is very popular in the province here in the Philippines, that once they have fish or they have meat and they don't have a uh, refrigerator, they don't, they don't have freezer. So in order that this food fish and meat can be preserved for a very, very, very long time. They have to put it dry with covering of salt. So once it is salted and you just, and the salt was completely uh, absorbed by this meat and by, the, by this fish, then that flesh is preserved for a long time. So all this meal offering is preserved by salt. It was seasoned by salt. And the third offering that was mentioned is chapter three is the feast offering. So that is the feast offering. So this is the burn. This is the meal. Or they call it also the fellowship offering. And this is the peace offering. Now in peace offering, when you would like to make peace with God, uh, for example, when the nation of Israel have conquered the land or have won the battle, they are sacrificing a peace offering, meaning they have gained their peace because of the goodness of God in their life. So in our life, we are separated from God through our sins. And because we are separated from our God through our sins, then we are alienated. We become the enemy of God. What one of the most difficult, difficult things in life is to become an enemy of God. But God made a way because there's no way that we could have peace with God. There's no such thing that we could offer to have peace with God. Uh, remember, if you have some quarrel, with your husband or with your wife, with your friend or whosoever, in order to have peace with them, sometimes you are offering something to appease him and to, to cool down his emotion. And you are offering something, something that he really likes or she really likes that you have to offer. Because if you are going to offer that, it does not satisfy or appease that person then he will not accept your peace offering. But the moment a person, when you offer something and he or she accepted it, then you have made peace to that person. Now, what is the sacrifice to God in order for our sin, our alienation from God, 
our being enemy from God that would appease him, that would accept him. It is only through our Lord Jesus Christ. Because the offering that they are going to offer again is an animal, either male or female, it's an animal. So they have to burn everything of the animals. They are going to burn everything of the animals and they are going to bring the blood in the altar of incense and uh, sprinkle some of the blood and then the rest of the blood will be thrown in the burnt offering at, at the bottom part of the bottom uh, part of the burnt offering. All the blood will be thrown on the burnt offering. So, God will accept that offering. Once he accepted that offering, then we have peace with God. So that is peace offering. Now, when you are peace with God, what does it mean? It means that you can communicate, you can have a casual conversation, you have the rights to voice already, you have the rights to listen for his plans, uh, what he's going to do. You have the rights of everything because you have already peace with God. Now, the first three offerings that we have discussed, so these three offerings that we have discussed, is what we call a voluntary offering. These are not mandatory offerings. This is a free will offering. God will demand you will not demand you to do such things. It is according to your voluntary or free will offering. That's why in birth offering, this is the entry point of our salvation to God. Because this is a free will offering. And these are all voluntary. So these things are all voluntary. Now the birth offering, that was mentioned is the sin offering. Okay. The sin offering is the first offering that was mentioned. Now, the sin offering is from here. This is the sin offering. Now in the sin offering, it is offered with, with balak or goats, depending on your position of, your, of the land. If you are a priest, if you are a king, if you are a leader, whatsoever. There are so many different kinds of offerings that can be made. Cattle, balaks, or kids, or means it goats, okay? Now, in the sin offering, in the sin offering, uh, the same thing with the burnt offering. What is the sin offering? The sin offering is actually, it is a sin through ignorance. <coughs> Excuse me. It is the sin according to the sin of the people and the sin of the ignorance. It is the thing that should uh, means uh, oath, oath not to be done. Because in the sins of winning, you should not be doing that, but you have done that. Okay. Now, later on, I will give you the differentiation between the sin offering and the trespass offering because here we have now the trespass offering. There are difference between these things. So this one in chapter four, in sin, sin offering in chapter four, it is according to the sin of the people. So this is a sin against your fellow people. The things that you should have not, you should not do it to your fellow people, but you have done it, or the things that you have not done, that you should, that the thing that you should not be doing it, but you have done it, 
ignorantly that is also part of the sin. This is a sin against your people, against your brother, against your neighbor, uh, because if you are going to read in the sin, it is the sin of ignorance. Uh, they call it also the sin of ignorance. Through ignorance, sins through ignorance, because you have done something wrong to your neighbor, to your friend, to your family, but you don't know that you've done something wrong. That is also seen through ignorance. Now, once you come to know that you have made fault or mistakes or sin against your brother, against your family, against your neighbor, then they have to offer the sin offering. And another thing also that was mentioned, it is the sin offering is according by the sin of the people, according to the sin of the people. Now, according to the sin of people means you know that you have, you know that this is not right, but still you have done it. You know that it is wrong, still you have done it. So that is sin against people. Means you have done something wrong with other people. That is what we call the sin offering. Now they could offer here male or female of any livestock or herd from the herd, and they are going to take the inward parts, remove it, but the burning of the animals is outside the camp, not inside the tabernacle of Moses. It is outside the camp. Why? Because in voluntary offering, this is a sweet aroma to God. Once they offered the offering of burnt meal and peace, once they burn here, it is sweet aroma to God. But the offering that was made through sin and trespass, this is offered outside. Not here, but here, not here. Outside because it's not a sweet aroma of God. It is a payment. It is for atonement for the soul. It, has, it is for the atonement for the soul. Now, in trespass offering, in trespass offering, it is a sin that not witnessing, not witnessing means you saw some crime, you saw some evil deeds that has been done, no one has was able to saw it in order to bring judgment. They need witnesses in order to bring judgment to that. You have seen that matter, but you keep quiet. So it is something that you should have done, but you did not do it. Okay? So that is not with witnessing. And another thing, touching the unclean things. If you are going to touch the any unclean thing, you are... Uh, trespasses against God means, for example, a dead body, a dead animal. If you have touched that, you become unclean. It has nothing to do with other people that you committed sins unto them because you have touched a dead body which is not uh, accepted to God or by swearing. So many people, are, most especially Christians, are falling into this trespass of a sin. What is by swearing? They have sweared in their heart and in their mind. Lord, once I got this, I will give this. Lord, I pray to you something. Once you give it to me, I will give you to this. So, Lord, once you bring me to Qatar, I will give you whatever you want. I will surrender my life to you. So they are doing so many swearing unto God that no man was able to come to know that oath 
or that swearing. It is only by him and God. Only him or her and God. No one knows, but God knows. And when they will not fulfill that, they are doing a trespass sin, a sin of trespass sin. Okay? So that is a trespass offering. Now, in trespass offering, the difference between sin offering and trespass offering, I am searching with so many videos regarding the sin offering and trespass offering. And I have been praying to God, Lord, please enlighten me. How to explain to these people the difference between the sin offering and the trespass offering? Because as they could see, almost synonymous and there's nothing different about it. Okay? Now, in Leviticus chapter 1 and to 5, that is the offering, and chapter 4 and 5, that is the sin offering. Now, in Leviticus chapter 5, verse 19, Leviticus chapter 5, verse 19, this the Lord enlightened me this world. As I scan and reading all these things, the Lord has enlightened me this part. And he said, in verse 19, he said, It is a trespass offering. He had certainly trespassed against the Lord. So trespass offering is a sin against God not against men. Because sin offering, it is something that you have done, that you have trespassed or you have done something wrong to other people that made you sin. You, if there's a commandment that you were not able to do it, that is also a sin. That is a sin. Because if you are going to, to ask me, all these things that is being mentioned here, for example, not to sin, of course, it is your right not to tell something for the thing that you have done because it might it might endanger your life. That's why you are not telling it because it might endanger your life because you are a witness to a crime. What you are going to do? Are you going to endanger your family by witnessing of the crime or you should be keep quiet? Now, if you keep quiet, you sin against God. You did not actually committed a direct violation to that person, but you have committed sin against God because you rather protect your life and your family rather than standing on the truth and God's protection over you. Touching the unclean things. Once you touch the dead bodies, to other people, touching the dead body is not a sin, especially if your work is in uh, crematory or your work is to, uh, uh, to, to fix the, the dead body. Of course, that is, that's not a sin against other people. But against to God, it is unclean. And swearing most especially, most especially swearing. You did not sin against other people. You sin against God because it is between you and God. So all of these things, it is between you and God. And all of these things is between the other people that you committed sins against them. Okay. And these things, sin Offering and trespass offering, this is mandatory. Whether you like it or not, you have to offer this sin offering and trespass offering. If you have not sinned against man, but you have sinned against God. So these are mandatory. This is voluntary. And this is mandatory. So you can see the 
the message of the five offerings. Let me put here press pass. The five offerings that was mentioned, it is the message of the cross. It is, this is voluntary. That's why it is a sweet aroma to God. It is an open thing to God. But this is the thing that is mandatory. It will hinder you going to God if you are not going to offer the sacrifices for the sin and trespass of it. But praise be to the living God. Okay? Because all the offering from the burnt offering, from the meal offering, because he became flesh for us, that God, the word became flesh in John 1, 14. The beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The word became flesh. Our Lord Jesus Christ became flesh, that we have peace with God. So from burn to meal to peace, to, to sin and to trespass, it is all paid by our Lord Jesus Christ. Complete. No leftovers. Done. Clean. So once you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the main verse that you need to always remember is Romans 3, 25. Faith in his blood. Faith in his blood. Because the sin and trespass, it requires blood. The burn and the peace, it requires blood. Now the meal offering, because that is the flesh, does not require blood because that is the, the flesh that has to be offered. So it's all fake in his blood. And all of this from burn, meal, or fellowship, peace, sin, and trespass are being paid by our Lord Jesus Christ at the cross of Calvary. When I studied these five offerings, I was really amazed by the word of God. Truly, there's no such man could be able to, to, to draw this kind of things in order to reveal more secrets or hidden things if you are going to dig deeper on the message of the offerings and of the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now you have fully understood why our Lord Jesus Christ has to pay the price at the cross because he fulfilled everything, all the offerings he fulfilled in one time, his own blood. As mentioned in John chapter 1, behold the Lamb of God that take away the sins of the world. I hope my brothers and sisters, this um, understanding of the five offerings will bring you more enlightenment. So once we are coming to the throne of God, we know that Jesus is our uh, sacrifice for the burnt offering. Jesus is our sacrifice for the meal offering. Jesus is our sacrifice for the peace offering. Jesus is our sacrifice for the sin offering. Jesus is the sacrifice for our trespass offering. That's why the veil, when he died, the veil between the holy place and the most holy place, it's already been removed. Because in this place, is where God is speaking to Moses. In this place, God manifesting his presence. Now, because there is no veil anymore, we can come now to the throne of God. That's how wonderful our Lord Jesus Christ is. From enemy to be, become his closest friend. From enemy to become his child. And as a child, we have the rights and the benefits of all the blessings that he prepared unto us. To God be all the glory for this wonderful study of the five offerings. God bless everyone. May the Lord be God, our Lord Jesus Christ, be with you all.